All right, we're gonna show the sound of my engine with the car running. It's been warmed up, so there should be oil pressure to the tensioner. I'm gonna be recording, revving it up for you to listen. Uh, so this is just to hear if there's any whines. So now we're gonna put the car ramps up and get started. Okay, that took a lot longer than I thought. Uh, my floor ramps kept slipping, so I had to use a jack to lift the car. Hopefully, this gives me enough space to access everything down here, um, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, it's like 90 something right now, so we're just gonna let it close the garage let the engine bay completely cool off because everything in there is scalding hot um, while I kind of brush up on how to do this and we can get started um, before doing a job this big I have all the tools kind of set out uh, in terms of what I need and you know we have our timing cool breaker bar uh, lights everything that we need and I think I have more Yep, this is what I got from Harbor Fight today. And here's the list, shopping list from FCP Euro. Um, here's everything that you're gonna need to do this job. So yeah, it's nice to have everything outright so you're just not spending time looking for stuff. So to get started, you've probably all seen FCP Euro's video and it's gonna be much better than mine. This is just to show you how to do it with tools at home. Um, I'm gonna start by removing the air box engine cover and the cowling same thing as fcp euro um this will probably just be like a time lapse um so yeah hopefully this is fun I'm blocking the camera when this happens, but I'm um, be basically prying up on this cover on both of these.
Okay, so to get to the last tab, you have to pull up on this side trim and look underneath. You'll see a single pin pry up on it and it, sh it should release the rest of this uh, cowl. All right, so I'm just gonna clean this cowl area right now. So here's the state of everything. We removed the air box, removed the engine cover, the deadening, the um, front cowling on the left and right, and then the rear cowling up to the windshield now. Um, <clears throat> next, we'll be moving into the belly pan, so underneath the car, starting to disassemble stuff there. Um, we're basically gonna throw out the old cowling. I have a new one from SCP Euro there. Uh, my old one, you can see, has started to deteriorate on the edges so we'll get rid of that one get a new one in make the car look nice again so yeah so we have the under panels off what we're going to do now is disconnect the battery in the rear and take the power out because we're going to start unplugging things i'm also going to undo the put the transmission lock or whatever put it into neutral that way um yeah and we'll also drain the oil all right <clears throat> so Oil filler undone. From the bottom of the car, it's currently draining. Um, yep, so pull this oil out in just a second and see how dirty it is. Now that the oil is out, I'm gonna go underneath the car with a five mil and put it into neutral manually. All right, so I've removed the front belly pan right here. You can see, um, and you can see the transmission belly pan back there hanging. There's not enough room off of these uh, ramps, so I'm gonna have to jack up that rear uh, corner to give myself a little bit of room to get underneath and undo those bolts. So front is jacked up, rear is sketchily jacked up. I don't recommend doing that. I recommend putting a tire. We're actually fitting the jack stand down there, not old Harbor Freight ones. And let's get the remainder of this panel down here off. So now we have complete access to everything. So here's our ZF8 speed right here. Um, what else do we have? You can see the plastic bag where it, I ran over a shopping bag and melted onto my exhaust. Uh, you can see the trans, this is the transmission filter, which is actually due on my car. Um, right here, the oil pan, and this is the driver's side engine mount where we will need to jack it up to, in order to get this oil pan out. Um, more goodies down here. That's the plastic cover that you need to take off to lock the flywheel with the tool. Um, if your car is not in neutral, here's where you engage it. Um, and that's all the front of the car right there. Let me see if I can show where the flywheel lock pin goes. Okay, under the car. I put the drain plug back in just so I don't get oil in my face. Okay. So, what we're looking for is on the driver's side, this guy.
oh there you go just a little bit more just to be safe and we should be in neutral now all right so with a 22 millimeter socket uh, I checked that the engine rotates freely now since the car is in neutral uh, so that all worked now I need to remove the bracing which is a bunch of E20s Here's the oil fill. You can see it's a little bit loose. The guide is a little bit loose also. And I cannot get one finger underneath. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this over now. It's hard because the engine has pressure. You can hear the, the valves opening. Oh God. This part of the chain is tighter. Uh, yeah, it's a bit tighter. So I'll keep going. All right. So I did notice that when I'm rotating this over by hand, uh, they, the cams do tend to roll back a little bit, especially if there's pressure in the cylinder. But I rolled over the chain and it was tight until this point. And here I can fit about a finger underneath. And you can see how loose it is here. I'm gonna continue rotating it and see if there's any sections that are looser than this. Okay, we're gonna try something interesting. So we're gonna look in the oil fill cap. The car is in neutral. I'm gonna grab another phone here and I'm gonna film inside the oil fill cap. To sh I'm gonna turn the engine over and see if there's any part of this chain that has more slack than other parts to just to take a look. So here's that. Okay, here's the oil fill. You can see it's a little bit loose. The guide is a little bit loose also. And I cannot get one finger underneath. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this over now. because the engine has pressure. You can hear the, the valves opening. This part of the chain is tighter. Yeah, it's a bit tighter. So I'll keep going. All right, this is just for illustration. I did a couple more rotations. You can see here, it's completely tight again. Com the guide won't even move. So there are sections of the chain, it seems, that are stretched more so than um, other sections. Okay, so
Should be able to undo. These are the same. There should be a little tab inside. So you can push. All these cornices and clips are different.
Firewall in the way. Are you kidding me? How am I supposed to get to these? Why? Like, I can get my D6 on here. <clears throat> I need to turn this pain around this big guy. <clears throat> I'm gonna get a flat E6. <clears throat>
All right, so we are looking at the transmission right now, and supposedly up here somewhere, you should be able to see where the flywheel pin would go. Um, uh, and I am not seeing anything. Check on the other side. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. Um, hmm. This, this ZF is really hot. Oh, nothing. So when you're looking for, I'm directly underneath my cat and it's covered in oil just because my valve cover is off. And if you're looking for that flywheel locking tool to find TDC, it's literally to the left of my finger and you're gonna reach in here pretty deep about my entire my, <coughs> my entire ring finger <coughs> and it's back there <coughs> okay so you can see my light way up there but my pick is literally hanging on the hook oh and that fell off god dang it but i got about most of it out let me see if i can just grab it with my hand now oh there we go and here it is, you see how tiny it is. It just fits up there, this way, right above the cat, 
above this shelf in about three inches and you can feel let's see if you can feel the hole for the lock now yeah it's right there so let me get the tool up and see if you guys can see so this is my oil pan it's gross and this is the transmission my cta tool and what i want to just show you is that uh, i got the flywheel lock engaged so it's really hard to see um let me try to get it okay it's way way up there and you can see directly in the middle it's engaging with the flywheel which means it's at tdc i have the cta tool now right here and you can see that the teeth uh, are engaging right here i'm gonna go ahead and duct tape it up so it doesn't fall and uh we can begin removing the belt Thank you. 
So I've been rotating this around and this is what I mean by this specific part of my chain is stretched. So it's been tight this entire time and I've rotated to this section right now. And you can see how much I can, I can really get underneath here. Like two fingers and you see how much it bunches up. So, I mean, that's probably not good. And looking down here, there's not that much wear on the guide itself. I'm feeling it, there's no groove. Um, so this chain is probably still good, to be honest. Um, but the guide is definitely cracked right here and you can see the movement. So that's not good. And you can see how it's shaking the entire upper assembly, like even, even this part right here. So might as well just replace it now. Um, yeah, this can totally jump timing. You can see it's, if it's spinning quite fast, I mean, I'd be impressed if, wow. All right, so we finished getting the valve cover off. Um, I cleaned up all the mating surfaces with some brake clean, so it's it's relatively good to go for when um, the new valve cover comes in. I'm not gonna be replacing, I'm going to be replacing this one. It's starting to get brittle on the inside and I know it's gonna start flaking just like the N54 I've worked on. So something really interesting to note, if you notice down here, you'll see that the guides are cracked. And you can tell they're cracked because of how much, watch this guy is able to freely move out of it. So let me turn the engine over. You can hear the valves opening and closing and all the air coming out, there we go got easy yep chain is tight it's pretty tight um, I don't think the chain has any issues but the guides are definitely cracked and it's time to replace them Okay, disconnected the oil sensor, and now up here, there's this guy I need to remove from the oil pan now. I think that's an E10, we'll check it out. And then we need to jack up the engine, so we'll be disconnecting the motor mount from underneath. It's actually very, very easy. And then there'll be a jack right here and it will go straight up on this arm and push up this entire side and hopefully um, that lifts it enough to give us clearance to uh, remove this oil pan. All right, got the guide out, and you can see right here where it's significantly cracked, um, where all the retaining pins uh, for these spots were just worn, like they were polished. Um, the chain itself, I'm gonna check right now. I don't believe it's stretched too bad. Um, it was mainly, the, I think, the vibrations causing this part to break, and it was just, literally hanging in there. Um, let me show you all these parts here. Uh, so here are the Vanost uh, left and right. And here, if you look at all these pins, you can see where 
it's just smooth one section right here and right there look at that that is actually where um, it's literally just rubbing against the plastics and it causes it to polish like that because the vibration is so great so all this stuff is out um, here's the car right now you see the oil chain down there so everything here has been looking good um, having an issue getting the oil pan off I think I need to raise the engine a little bit more to finally get it off but once we do that we should be able to lock the uh, oil pump and remove that as well. All right, so <clears throat> I've undone all six uh, subframe bolts, then used a pry bar and just lowered it a little bit. So you can see right there, the gap between the subframe and the frame itself. And now I'm gonna try to see if I can wiggle this uh, oil pan out. I have actually put two bolts back in so it would not annoy me while I worked on the subframe, but I will give it a shot now. Okay, finally got that out. Um, I had to literally drop the subframe, pry it with a pry bar, and there's oil everywhere. But, got it out. Now I can finally work on the oil pump up there and uh, continue. Okay, CTA tool is up there now. Uh, gonna undo that T60, compress the chain, undo all these and remove the oil pump. All right, so we got this old oil pump drive unit out. You can see that some parts are already cracked and gone. So that's probably why I had wine. Um, I'm looking at these guides. They, I don't feel a groove or anything, but this is the old style chain for the oil pump drive and the smooth surfaced uh, oil uh, gear is right there. Here's this unit, um, the tensioner, pretty good. Uh, no grooves or anything. So that means everything is finally out. Uh, I'm gonna start cleaning the bottom part of the engine and begin reassembly. All right, so here's the new chain and here's the old chain. And you can see they're pretty much lined up top to bottom. And as I come down, um, they are pretty much identical in terms of length. So I really don't think my chain was stretched. My guides were just completely destroyed. So um, yeah, I really don't think, and again, I am not tuned or anything, so um, I think my old chain is actually completely fine. Um, it's just that, yeah, this, the guides go before the chain and this oil pump drive tends to stretch out also with this old design, this, uh, this lug design compared to the newer ones that are solid. So I'm going to begin installation of the oil pump drive and, uh, see if, how far I can get tonight. So here's the <clears throat> new guide and I've just looped the chain around. And you can see that there is quite a bit of room for this to play. And I wonder if that in the long term causes vibrations. And also this lip right here is very, very, very thin. So as this um, wears out, I expect this area to be one of the first areas to crack, which is the same on mine. Um, <clears throat> down here also, I've noticed on my older one, it fails to even lock together uh, as this one does. So we'll see how this new guide holds up. Here's my new oil pump assembly. And you notice these solid end link chains versus the double one from the old style. Also the la laser engraving, the updated part from FCP Euro. Very nice piece of kit. I'm gonna start with installing this guy. All right, uh, new oil pump is in. New main front crankshaft seal is in. The snout is in again. <clears throat> we got both cam gears in and they rotate. Um, one second, my hand is all cut up. 
table should rotate fairly freely. I don't know why it's not. It's binding on something. All right, here you go. <clears throat> they spin, and if you look all the way down there, you can see that <sighs> it's spinning down there as well, which means we are good. All right, crankshaft bolt is going in now. My camera is covered in oil, so it's all, looks terrible, but I'm gonna hand thread this in. Then tighten it down with the torque wrench and then another 270 degrees. So let me clean my camera real quick. All right, here's my huge breaker bar. Getting that extra 270 degrees of rotation. Oh, I'm actually not even on the engine mounts. Oh, that's kind of sketch, but you see I marked it right there and it needs to end up right there. So maybe like 20 more degrees and this is done. All right, so we've marked our cam adjusters, um, the harmonic balancer, vibration balancer, whatever. And I did two full rotations. So therefore, the oil pump should line up, which it is. You can see that black mark I made. The flywheel should have a black mark which it does right there. Sweet. That means everything is in time and we're good to go. All right, so we filled the car up with oil. We are now gonna reconnect the negative terminal. All right. Car kicked on. Fuel lines should be pressurized. Okay, so let's see. Let's uh, start it a couple times and um, build pressure in the system. Okay, wow, it's been a while. Brakes, parking brake is on. Let's do that one more time. So. All right. Now let's uh, go plug in the spark plugs and everything else and get it started. Okay, refitted the uh, valve, the plastic cover, air box, Plugged in all my sensors. Same with the vacuum lines here. The Everything should be plugged in now. The car should start. It should run, it's pressurized. So let's give it a try. It's running pretty rough. down to idle now. All the smoke on the, on my manifold is burning off. All the oil leaking from uh, the gaskets. It's 
quite noisy. It's running pretty rough. Let it run for a little bit, build pressure. All right, I used the scanner. I was getting a cylinder three misfire, which is why I'm getting a check engine light drive frame malfunction. And I went to go check my, um, the injector was not plugged in. So let's try one more time. Oh, so much smoother. my reverse lights because I coated them. There's no power to this. Okay. Uh, yeah, no codes. Let's get a little rev going. feels really responsive right now. All right, let's lower the car and go for a little drive. All right, so we're gonna be looking at some of my old components now that the car has everything installed. <clears throat> Here's my old oil pan. I went ahead and ordered a new one uh, just because I've seen <clears throat> BMW plastics get quite bad. I don't really want to do an oil pan job again, so let's start off with this oil chain drive unit. It's got where it's in the light, <clears throat> and you can see that there is where every other couple of teeth, um, right there, where it's really shiny. Uh, besides that, I can't really tell if there's that much stretch going on, but. <laughs> Here's the new unit. You can see how loose it is. Uh, additionally, I think this is what the biggest chunk that broke on one of my guides is right here uh, where it mounts the engine. So this could have been rattling quite a bit. Um, so let's keep going and take a look at some other stuff. <clears throat> now, when I removed my guides, um, this actually was not even locked at the bottom. It just came apart. And if you go outside and take a look at the wear, um, there is a little bit of grooving happening over there. This is where the tensioner actually pushes against and there's no real wear or anything here. Just that slight grooving all the way to the top up there with the chain drags. No cracks or anything on this portion. And then let's take a look at this upper guide assembly. <clears throat> so one thing I did note is this pin is just completely loose in here. I'm not sure um, if that's just from over time or anything. There is slight groove happening up here. You can see that. Uh, no real cracks or anything on this guy that I can find. Um, yeah. Now, lastly, the right portion of the guide. I've seen uh, some people on forums with it cracking down here where it's quite thin. I don't have any. Uh, all my cracking happened up here where it mates with the upper portion of the guide. Another thing that I noted um, after a couple of days ago was I was looking for any grooving happening in here. Just a little bit, but remember it was completely wobbly up here and this was just not mating, so there's a lot of play. You can see where the chain has just eaten away up here. Very unusual, because that means as the gear is rotating very fast, it's throwing that excess chain there's no uh, tension into this guide and it's this is the the most wear on any of the guides so yep everything else looks pretty good uh yeah here's the old chain and like i said before i don't seem to have any stretching uh so my assumptions before were pretty wrong i compared it to the new chain they 
in terms of like the stretch and how much play it has and it's relatively the same um now one of the biggest things i've noted is that the tensioner uh my old tensioner is actually well they've redesigned the tensioner um if you go online on the forums you'll find out and on this tensioner it's also very very easy to compress with one hand versus the other one i could barely do so um so to be honest i would recommend changing these out probably 30 to 40 thousand miles all right so i'm in line for the duq but i'm going to talk a little bit about <clears throat> in conclusions to this series um number one is this possible to do at home uh with just general tools i think if you've done a brake pad change if you've done a valve cover if you can do things like that uh this is definitely doable it's just a lot more steps I took about a week to do this. Um, take your time, go buy the tools that you do need, return them if you need to, and that's how you can get it done. <clears throat> now, in regards to the chain itself, um, my timing chain was not stretched in any way. Uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, the guides were definitely shattered, and on top of that, the I think the main culprit for mine was the tensioner and the oil drive chain unit. Uh, if you take a look at the oil train oil chain drive unit the chain is significantly stretched um the guides holding it to the engine were also shattered so i think that's where most of the wine was coming from uh so in conclusion i think yes you should be replacing that tensioner every 30 to 40 thousand miles um if you do have wine from the lower portion of your engine it's definitely the oil chain drive unit not the uh timing chain so yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this and hopefully this was helpful.